Many people strive to be perfect, whatever that means. They focus on getting their report or essay or new YouTube video perfect. But the desire for perfection is actually a burden that can bring about unhappiness because as many of us can rationalize, perfection is impossible. Perfection does not exist in nature. Perfection as we know it is a man-made construct. Who decides that the design of a particular house is perfect? Who says that this novel is a perfect example of literary prose? It's all subjective. Perfection is a fabrication and utterly unattainable. However, I have struggled with perfectionism all my life. Even to this day, I spend far too long writing emails, trying to word them succinctly and precisely. But for what? So that the other person thinks that I'm a good writer? So that the other person respects me? If I need to meet someone at 10am for a quick discussion about the upcoming meeting, then why would I need to spend more than one minute writing that email? But unfortunately, I do. Sometimes I think, if I write it this way, there's a chance they might think I'm being pushy. If I write it this way, they might think that it's not very important and might not respond. Should I put it as urgent? Should I add this emoji or that? I'd better spend the next 30 minutes wording it exactly right so there's no miscommunication. What a joke. A one-sentence email turns into a multi-paragraph essay. But I hate it. I hate being a perfectionist. Sometimes I can control myself and not give in to it. I teach my son. It doesn't matter if you write every sentence perfectly. It's better to finish your homework with some errors than to only finish a quarter of it with no errors. I see it all the time with students. They have a 3,000-word essay due in a couple of days' time, but instead of just putting all their thoughts down on paper, they spend a whole day writing just the introduction. They ask me whether it would sound better this way or that, should they use this word or that word, but in the end, it doesn't matter. It's better to finish an assignment and get a C than to write a perfect introduction, not finish, and then fail. It's not logical, but many students do it. They prefer to hand in nothing than handing in an imperfect assignment. I do feel for them. I've struggled with the same perfectionist obsessions myself. But luckily, the realist in me trumps my perfectionism. If I know something is due, I'll get it done no matter what. If I can't work out the title for my next video, I'll just stick with whatever pops into my head. Perfection is irritating. It's dull and boring. So why do we have perfectionists? Why do we see people always striving to achieve some perfect state? I was at the dentist yesterday, and she was telling me about all the problems associated with dental braces. She sees people coming in who had braces put on them at a young age. Many of them had to have perfectly good teeth removed in order to fit the braces and make room. But unfortunately, there are side effects later in life. Things like sleep apnea and mouth breathing. So why do so many people get braces? Sure, some of them have a legitimate reason, but mostly it's because they want to achieve the perfect smile. You can see it written all over the walls of most dental surgeries, or read about it in the myriad of pamphlets. You see it in Hollywood. People want perfectly aligned, bright white teeth. Personally, I can't bear them. I think they look so unnatural. Ladies are forever trying to perfect their image. Breast implants, Botox, facelifts. Some men are no better. Peck implants, liposuction, hair dye. The list of things people do to try to achieve some perceived ideal is endless. Nobody wants to look natural anymore. And that raises a key point. Perfection is not natural. Look at the world around you. Look at the trees. Look at the animals. Look at the clouds in the sky. Is anything perfect? Are any two trees identical? Of course not. Trees are just a somewhat random growth of branches, twigs and leaves in a somewhat upwards direction. Rocks were created by volcanic eruptions millions of years ago, all with their own unique look and composition. But yet, despite all this lack of perfection, nature is beautiful. The random shapes of clouds formed in the sky are exquisite. We don't expect clouds to be exactly the same, just as we don't expect trees to be exactly the same. But yet, when it comes to ourselves, we try to achieve the perfect smile, the perfect hair, the perfect eyebrows, and the perfect butt. We try to write the perfect report or get the perfect grade. We strive for perfection, but in the end, it hurts us. Look at the photo of the Korean ladies on the right. They're Miss Korea 2013 contestants who have all tried to achieve the perfect look. It's no secret that South Koreans have an obsession with plastic surgery. But what have we ended up with? A beauty pageant full of clones. Their facial features are almost all the same. Is this what perfection is? Everybody ending up looking and acting the same way? What a bore. 
In nature, we appreciate uniqueness. We like looking at all the different kinds of flowers and trees. We enjoy the earthy smells and the floral scents. We enjoy the imperfection. Humans are a part of nature too, are they not? Then doesn't it follow that all people are different and unique? Some people have big noses, some people have small. Some people are good at maths, some people are not. Some people have blonde hair, some people grey. Some people have big breasts, some people have small. What a boring world it would be if we all looked the same. The Japanese have a concept known as wabi-sabi. Proponents believe in the acceptance of transience and imperfection, that one can only find beauty in things that are imperfect, impermanent, and incomplete. By its very nature, nature is imperfect. Therefore, people as a part of nature are also imperfect. Cherry blossoms are beautiful because we know that they're only temporary and will soon go away. Puppies are cute and lovable because we know that they're not that way forever. Nature is transient by its very nature. I bought a clay mug when I was in Japan over 15 years ago. It was the perfect mug in that it held my warm soup or tea and felt warm to the touch. However, it was not perfect in appearance. It wasn't perfectly round. The ink of the Japanese characters had run a little bit down the sides. The handle stuck out a bit too far from the side. But I loved it. I used it all the time. But then guess what happened only a few days ago? I dropped it on the tiled floor in the kitchen and it shattered into a thousand pieces. I wasn't upset. I wasn't sad. I realized it was living up to its wabi-sabi design. The Japanese craftsman who crafted it originally knew that one day his mug would break. It was never designed to last forever. Its beauty came from its imperfection and impermanence. Psychologically speaking, perfectionists suffer greatly. They spend their lives trying to achieve something that will never eventuate. It has a huge psychological toll. Perfectionists are never living in the moment. They are forever trying to critique the past or worry about the future. It's a fruitless endeavor. Perfectionism robs us of the ability to live in the moment and experience the vitality of life. Perfectionism does not bring happiness. So what is one to do? The best thing I can advise is to live life in the moment. Accept that you have gray hair or small breasts or a large nose and enjoy the present. When you walk through a forest, enjoy the earthy smells, the cool breeze on your face, and the sounds of birds in the distance. When you're at home and your son is feeling bored, take him to the park and play a game. Take the dog for a walk. Realize that people who seek out bigger breasts or whiter teeth or less wrinkles on their forehead are never going to be happy. They're on a conveyor belt of discontent. They can never reach perfection, and nor can you. Accept yourself as you are. Improve where you can. You can choose to eat healthy. You can choose to get into shape. But sticking some silicone in your chest is not going to help. Live life in the moment. Admire nature. Enjoy the feeling of the warm Japanese cup in your hands. Treasure the time spent with loved ones. But most importantly, realize that perfection is overrated and utterly unattainable. As adherents of Wabi Sabi would say, Enjoy the imperfect, accept the impermanent, and treasure the incomplete.